Hey guys, it's Mitch. I'm back. I was on a Canadian reality show called Big Brother for the last while, but I'm here. I'm back in the ASAP Science office and ready to make some more videos. Let's do this. Even though oceans cover 71% of the Earth's surface, it's hard for us living on land to interact with these aquatic animals. But we went to an aquarium recently and were inspired by a lot of the epic underwater animals, so here are eight awesome aquatic animals. Paddlefish are a freshwater fish that are actually covered in skin, not scales. Ew. They are known as a primitive fish and that they have not changed morphologically very much at all since their first fossil record 75 million years ago. The paddlefish's paddle-like snout is called the rostrum. Whoa. The rostrum is covered in electrical receptors that are able to detect weak electrical fields, which help them find their prey, which is zooplankton. As a frequent frolicker of the Great Lakes living in Toronto, I was very, very scared to find out that these paddlefish actually live in Great Lakes. We were sad, but also a little bit relieved to find out that they have actually been extirbated and that they used to live in the Great Lakes in the wild, but they do not now. Loss of spawning habitats from overfishing and damming has diminished their population so much that they no longer exist in the Great Lakes. These anemones may look like a flower, but they're actually a marine animal. When prey, like fish, get close enough to its tentacles, it releases a paralyzing neurotoxin, making the prey unable to move as it pulls it closer to its mouth. Pretty and deadly. However, one fish that isn't affected is the clownfish. Clownfish, like Nemo, are protected by a mucus layer that is immune to the anemone's sting. The two have a symbiotic relationship where the clownfish get to hide from predators and the anemones get to snack on the clownfish's leftovers. Okay, Nemo fans, clownfish are just one member of the great biodiversity found in coral reefs. Oh, they're so cute. It's so beautiful and we were blown away by all the colors and different species and types of fish that live in coral reefs. A quarter of all ocean species rely on coral reefs for food and shelter, but coral reefs actually only make up 2% of the ocean floor. Look at all those teeth on that sand tiger shark. Although they may look scary even with their mouth closed, they're not actually aggressive towards humans unless you're bothering them. Like all other sharks, they breathe through their gills, but unique to all other sharks, they actually come to the surface every now and then and gulp in air. This air isn't used to breathe, but it's actually used to become more buoyant, allowing them to float around while looking for prey. Jellyfish are so cool to look at, but ouch, they can sting. Jellyfish look really cool, especially under weird black lights like they do at aquariums. At the aquarium, we learned about the life cycle of a jellyfish, how it starts from a polyp and then ends up as the beautiful majestic medulla. As well, their mouths are multi-purpose. They use their mouths to eat, but also to squirt out water to propel themselves forward and even to excrete waste. So if you're having a bad day, just remember that you don't have to poop and eat out of your same mouth or squirt water to move around. You have legs, that's sweet. This one's my favorite, the cuttlefish. It's just so cute. But they're not actually fish, they're cephalopods, which means they're related to the octopus. Cuttlefish are amazing at blending into their surroundings because they have 200 chromatophores per millimeter on their skin, which allows them to blend in with their surroundings almost instantly. Also, the muscles in their dermis allow them to change texture and shape too. Stingrays! Like sharks, stingrays' bodies are supported by cartilage instead of bones. Cartilage, kind of like the things in your nose. Their broad fins run the length of their body and move like a wave to propel them gracefully through the water as if they're flying. Sea dragons are the pros at disguise. These long leaf-like protrusions from their bodies aren't actually used for propulsion, but used to help blend in with their surroundings to hide from predators. These sea dragons are in the same family as sea horses, and as a result, the female passes the eggs to the male in which he becomes pregnant and gives birth to the little sea dragon kids. Learning about these animals up close provides an opportunity to debunk a lot of misinformation, especially when it comes to sharks, who get a really bad rep as ferocious human-eating creeps. In 2014, there were only three shark-related deaths, but the fear around sharks has contributed to over 100 million sharks being killed annually. However, it's reasonable to question the ethics of places like aquariums and zoos where animals are kept in captivity. For example, earlier this year, an aquarium in Japan held a great white shark that died after three days. This is the first of several attempts to host great white sharks for the purpose of profit, but great white sharks can travel hundreds of kilometers in a day and obviously aren't meant to be contained. Does the curiosity that aquariums provoke along with the research and conservation that they create help justify the fact that we're keeping animals from the wild? These are great questions and we would love to know what you think, so leave a comment below with your opinion and make sure you subscribe to this channel for more weekly epic videos. Peace!